Look at what you've got there. There's some example data similar to um, similar to, to the Simon data, but but different. Yeah. What I've done is I've put that into uh, the online graph and software Desmos as a table. So to do that, you click that downward arrow there and you so say you're going to en enter a table of data and then you put, put in all your points so the x points in the x column your data in the y column and that plots dots on the graph and area according to that data what we need to do here is just do a little bit of work around because um, you can zoom with this software generally in and out but it can manually set the axes so we can make this kind of fill page. I mean, we've got a maximum data point here on the y-axis of about three, and we're going up. We're only interested in up to 30 on the x-axis. So if we go in this um, spanner here, I can manually, uh, I can leave the x-axis alone. That pretty much fills the screen. But the y-axis, if I go from let's say minus one, we've got nothing negative, but if you keep a little bit of the minus side, that keep your axis on the screen, and we'll take it up to five. When you've done that, that makes it look that much bigger and easier to handle. Yeah, and you can take a better screenshot of it, for instance. What we're looking to do is fit some data, fit a function, um, to that data. And if you look there, you've got a list of different, a range of different functions that we might have looked at over the course. Linear, quadratic, cubic, sine, cosine, and so on. The, this data looks as though it's repeating. It's possible that we could fit um, some kind of polynomial to it. We might get a cubic to fit, or something of it, even higher order. And in fact, if you were we're going to be later on looking at a technique where we could come up with a power series that would fit this data. And, and Autograph will do a best fit and it will create a polynomial to a particular order that will fit that data. But that's not what I'm asking you to do. Okay? What I'm asking you to do is look at that and see if you've got a general function that kind of fits. And it is repeating, so we could look at sine and cosine, for instance. Yeah, and we just have a have a look and see which one we think best fits the data that we got. And if I look at that, okay, signs repeating, but it rises from here and falls away. If I look at the cosine, it's fallen away from there, like my data. So I'm probably going to pick in this instance the cosine, right? But the, you, you certainly would be able to get either of those things to fit that data. But I'm making a reasoned choice. Yeah. So what we've got to then do is work on this function because we know that actually it would be in the form of some constant in front representing the amplitude. We would have a bracket a term here. Um, and then we'd have another constant representing the frequency. We might have another constant representing the phase shift, okay, and, that, and then a further constant, I'm going to call that one k, representing the offset up and down uh, the axis. In, and in this software, if you put constants in, you can add sliders. Which will allow you. And I'm not. I'm not. I don't want you to do it this way. But it, what it does is give you an idea of the effect. Should do. I'm changing. Hang on. I've done it on the bloody sign. I want to do it on the. Side. There we. Probably. There we go. So I like this software because you can turn several functions on and off just by clicking those buttons. And you can put these sliders in so that you can see if the effect of each of the constants. 
Let's just get rid of that one. I didn't put I. Uh, I need I in there for me. Yeah. So I is the amplitude. We can note. Um, we can now see what the effect of changing the amplitude is. Makes that bigger. We can see the effect of changing B. Spreads it out and makes it narrower. We can see the effect of changing C. Shifts it along the Y axis. We can see the effect of changing K. Moves it up and down the Y axis. Okay? But I want you to make a more reasoned approach to it than that. So we go back to... To, to what we would have as a basic sign where the amplitude would be 1, the frequency would be 1, the phase shift would be nothing, and the shift up and down there would be nothing. So that's where we would start from. Yeah? So what would be the first of those three constants you'd think about dealing with? Probably the amplitude. So how can we look at the data we've got and get a rough figure for amplitude? Minimum and maximum value, which, let's go, so we've got 0.16 and 2.9. So what value are you going to put in for um, I? You got to, when you do this, you've got to explain what you're doing. So you've said minimum and maximum. How do I get it? What is the amplitude? If you drew a line on there for amplitude, where would you draw it? The amplitude is the distance from the middle of the waveform, isn't it, to the positive, negative peaks. Yeah. So, if you if you take the lowest away from the highest, and then half it, you've got the amplitude, then yeah. So, 2.9. Let's take away about 0.2. You've got 2.7. And half 2.7. That's half 2.6. 1. 1.3. Yeah. So let's take that out and put 1.3 in. Our amplitude looks like it might be somewhere near where we want it. We can always make fine adjustments later. Yeah. Okay. No. Next thing, what would you do next? Yeah. The frequency. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, what do we know, what, what can we get from here that's related to frequency? What sine wave parameter is related to frequency? In terms of, remember what this axis is, it's time really. The x axis is time. Yeah? So if I put frequency up, what happens to the time for one cycle? Sure. Frequency down, time for one cycle gets bigger. So there are there's an inverse relationship between the period of the wave, of one waveform, right, and the frequency of it. All right. We haven't in our data we haven't got a complete waveform, but we have got half of one. Yeah. Half of this waveform is happening in about 18 seconds. Yeah. So a full waveform is going to happen in. 36 seconds. Yeah? So, we have a situation where the period of this waveform 
is 36 seconds. The frequency in hertz will be 1 over 36. Yeah, right. And then we've got to turn that into radians per second, remember, because our angles are in radians. We get pi involved here. So we must we must have our angle in radians. So we go on frequency is one over thirty six into hertz. And remember in our formulae, we've got to turn that into radian per second. So how do we do that? One thirty six over hertz. How do we change from hertz to radians per second? 2 pi f and multiply 1 over 36 by 2 pi. Do you get that? Yeah. So, is this not going to be 2 pi of? We could either put 2 pi over 36 or we could put pi over 18, half a wave form. But you to, again, show the process, all right? Look like we might be somewhere near it now. Next. Work on K next. So, how would you do that then? K's got to be the value of y at the middle of the waveform, and it? You've got, you've got to draw the middle of this waveform up so that that peak sits at the same level, or that negative peak sits at the same level as that one. Yeah. So if you take, we find, how did we find the middle before? We effectively find the middle to do the amplitude. Yeah. So that was the biggest take away the smallest yeah gives us the peak and then we got to shift it up so it's it's effectively the amplitude is it not plus that lowest value yeah so we're talking about 1.3 let's add 0.2 on Try that, 1.5. Get in there. Yeah? Okay. And the last thing is the phase shift. Is the red waveform leaden or lagging the green dots? Sure? Remember time is later that way. Is the red line peaking after or before the green dots? After. It's lagging. Yeah? So we need to make it lead more. We need to add. If we go back to our slider this for, for um, C, Right. We need to make it positive. All right. But I want you to do it by a measured amount. I want you to look at the. I want you to look at it and decide on a value rather than fiddling around with sliders to get it to fit. Yeah. So if we look at this point, yeah, that's sitting at 18 seconds. That's sitting at 10 seconds. So the difference between 
the time on those two peaks is eight seconds. Yeah, and a whole waveform is thirty-six. Yeah. So do you get where we go? Do you see where we're going with that? We want to add eight thirty-six to the waveform. I think that'll work anyway. Yeah. So we haven't determined the phase shift by looking at the distance between the two waveforms, relating that to a complete circle, and then turning it into radians by multiplying that fraction by two pi. So that's the, this is the fraction of the difference over, and it might be easier if I show that as. Um, What I'm going to do is make that 8 over 36. Take a pi out of there and multiply that by 2 pi. Because you can, from that, you can kind of see a bit better what's being done. So that so this phase shift is calculated by it being um, eight seconds between two waveforms of a thirty-six, and then multiplying that that fraction of a whole period by two pi to turn it into radians. Yep. So we've got some data now that's a reasonably close fit. I mean, at looking at that, I'd probably try and shift that just a little bit more and get it closer. But what you're looking, you're never going to get it perfect. Have you got as many dots above as you've got below, and that kind of thing? So you've got a function there that if, um, that you can use, and you can integrate um, to using your normal mathematical methods. Okay, just just write that function down, please. Because what I'm now going to do is say you can then switch to autograph. Okay, you can put in um, data in an XY data set. Okay, uh, so in an XY data set, I've already done that. So I put the same data in autograph as you had in there, and then I'm going to do is put the equation in. So enter equation. Y equals what is our constant? The one, I was one point three. Uh, cos. Open some brackets. And then what do we have? Sorry. What was the next bit? Oh. So enter the function into autograph, and the blue line follows the, the dots pretty closely. Okay. Yep. So what we can do in here, right, is if we select that line, and yours might be a bit closer than that, you can right click and say find area. Yep. And then we get the option of rectangle rules, which we didn't look at, but we got the trapezium rule. Or the Simpsons rule. Start point. Remember, you're being asked to analyse over the first 20 seconds. So you put not put your limits in, and then you can decide how many divisions you want. All right. So this is where it makes it easier for you to experiment with more data points. Remember, you use 20 data. You're going to use 20 data points for your hand numerical methods. Okay. The other thing, don't forget to discuss the, the outliers that you got in your data and, and, and how you decide where you put your best fit line around them, whether you ignore them, go between them or whatever. Um, 
endpoint divisions. When you click OK, it kind of shows you how that's doing the trapezium rule, breaking it up into one, two, three, four, five divisions, and joining the tops with straight lines. Yeah, and then it gives you a result of that down here. Area is equal to 15.93. Yeah. So we can go back in, and we can. Um, I'm going to undo that so that we can't see it. We can do right click area Simpsons rule 25 divisions. When you zoom in here, I mean you can see. You can zoom in. You can't. You can not see where there's any error. Obviously, that will depend on how well it can fit the parabola to the data. If it's changing really quickly, that might not fit so well. Um, and again, you get an, an, a new area down here. All right. So that's really what I'm asking you to do: is use that software to analyse in that way. Write in a report on how you decided what these constants are. Always remembering that the function you get, the, the, the numerical, every method is an estimate because that function is not perfect. All right, but, but it's a comparison of those methods and what they give you. All right, happy now. You don't you don't have to use Desmos. You could use Autograph for the whole lot if you want to. All right, because you can do the function part of it in there as well. All right, yeah. Happy?